What's up guys with snow here and winter just around the corner today We're gonna be talking about the four reasons that people are not hiking in the winter here in Colorado for more information About this video go ahead and check the link below I'll be a bit more detailed in all of the four reasons. So let's get into them right off the bat number one trailhead access so obviously in the winter the winter brings snow snow brings less access to certain trailheads many of the trailheads here in colorado are located on roads that are not maintained throughout the year and so just getting to a trailhead that in the summer would be super easy or in the fall or spring uh, in the winter with all the snow and no maintenance it's really difficult and so a hike that let's say could be five miles could turn into 10 plus just on the extra hiking on the road and obviously with how slow it goes in the snow sometimes it's a huge factor typically a trailhead uh, most of them that are on roads that are seasonal you can pretty much google when they're open but really it's uh, end of october until sometimes even june that they don't open up again depending on the snow level so uh, be sure to be extra careful when you're picking a winter hike that you can actually get to the trailhead. The second reason that hiking in the winter here in Colorado is so difficult is because of the amount of gear you have to either buy, wear, or carry. So let's start off with soft goods. So you can see today I'm in a jacket. Um, so just like summer hiking, winter, spring, you have to have layers. But in the winter, some of these layers can get super expensive to buy. And uh, you know, someone who's just a casual hiker may not really want to invest in all of that gear. So in addition to soft goods, like jackets, clothes, etc., you have hard goods. So hard goods are any kind of additional equipment you might need for your winter hike. And what is that? Well, I've talked about it in previous videos. Yak tracks, crampons, uh, mountain axe, snowshoes, and um, sometimes, you know, a helmet. And if you really want to get crazy, you can bring skis, snowboard, splitboard as well. But all of those things add weight to your bag. They add... a tremendous amount of physical exertion in most cases to use them. If you want to get super technical, you're going to need ropes, you're going to need anchors, all kinds of climbing gear, and that can just add up not only the expenses, but the skill and knowledge you need to use all of the gear I mentioned, which can scare a lot of people off. If you do plan on investing in some winter gear, always for soft goods, Cotton kills. Do not buy anything cotton. Buy anything synthetic so that it dries quickly, it sheds water better, and just overall will keep you warmer in those cold days. Uh, second, wind layers, like stuff that uh, wind cannot get through is super, super helpful uh, because those wind uh, chills and temperatures can really eat through any layers you have that may not be able to do that. And then with hard goods, I've talked about this before, but you can have the nicest setup in the world. It doesn't matter what you have if you don't know how to use it. So be sure before you go buying all these things on REI and Backcountry and all these other sites, know how to use them before you pack them in your bag. The third reason why high Hiking in Colorado during the winter is so difficult it's because of the risk of avalanche so I'll preface this whole thing I've said it before I am NOT an avalanche expert by any means but I know a thing or two about them that I can share with you today avalanche risk can start as early as October this year as you can see by the around me we got a couple of big storms the mountains up there have gotten a bit more so avalanche risk has already started to take into effect. And so you need to be able to educate yourself. There's a number of avalanche courses, uh, getting certified at least AVI 1 uh, is very, very helpful. I'll have links below somewhere here on more information about that. And of course the blog below will have more information about resources, but in general, educate yourself before you go anywhere, hiking, snowmobiling, skiing, whatever. Uh, avalanches affect any human who's out in the backcountry, And because of avalanche risk, really starting at the end of October, going all the way through June sometimes, you need to know what you're dealing with, the types of avalanches that can affect you, and certainly, certainly know how to rescue yourself and rescue others before going into situations that could be risky. So a couple of resources I highly, highly recommend are our Colorado Avalanche Information Center. I'll have a link for that below. They start doing weekly forecasts across the state of Colorado on the danger level, things to look out for, and it's a very, very important resource to have. The other thing that's awesome is CalTopo Maps. I'll have a link for that below as well. And basically, CalTopo Maps is like the hiking 
resource you, you could use for everything. But specifically for avalanches, it's really key because it'll show you the grade of the slope that you'll be hiking on on the routes that you choose. And this is important because there's certain angles, as anyone who knows things about avalanches know, that are much more prone to an avalanche risk versus others that maybe are not as much and safe to hike year round. There's a bunch of places that, that'll offer free classes and courses that'll give you the basic information that you need to know. So just look around your area, even REI sometimes has them. And while those classes are not the in-depth amount of training you're gonna need for super intense backcountry adventures that'll at least give you the basic knowledge so that you can safely assess the situation based on your skill and knowledge before going into the winter snow. The old expression in backcountry, anything really, and that applies to winter hiking as well, is if you don't know, don't go. The fourth and final reason why hiking in the winter here in Colorado is so difficult is because routes change significantly. Obviously, when you have snowfall covering up a trail, route finding becomes so much more important. And frankly, on certain mountains, there'll be routes that you just can't take because it's too dangerous. Because of the avalanche risk I mentioned, because of uh, super exposed territory, having snow pockets that you're not sure how wide the snow is, dealing with cornices, things of that nature, just becomes super dangerous. However, although the routes become maybe more difficult in certain areas. Winter and spring hiking with snow opens up a wide variety of colors and things that you would not be able to do throughout the year with dry conditions. So that's definitely a positive for winter hiking here in Colorado. So I know this whole video has been a lot about the negatives about why hiking in the winter is so difficult here, but there are a ton of positives as well. Obviously, number one, being able to hike a mountain and then ski or snowboard down is so much fun and it saves you all of that monotonous, boring hiking from the summit back to your car. Super, super fun stuff. Also, typically in hikes here, there'll be way less people on mountains, on routes that in the summer and fall and spring are super crowded. So that's really nice if you're looking for that more secluded factor. Obviously, if you're into ice climbing, if you're into snowshoeing, if you're into just using those crampons to get up steep terrain, the winter is prime for that. Some of you may be asking, well, hey, what are some good winter hikes? That's a really tough question, but in general, you wanna find hikes that are very, very low, if zero avalanche risk. You wanna find things that have great access to the trailhead, things that are closer to the front range here, things like Chief Mountain, things like Squaw Mountain. Those are really nice, mellow winter hikes, but it'll also let you get that experience of hiking as well, and the trailhead access is great. The thing to keep in mind during the winter, as I mentioned with trailheads, is that a lot of passes close, and so that's another huge factor. So that'll wrap it up the four reasons here that in Colorado during the winter hiking is so much more difficult leave a comment below if you like to hike in the winter what are your favorite winter hikes if I've missed a tip that you find helpful during your adventures any questions concerns go ahead and throw them in the comments below please subscribe not to miss any future hike videos and again check out that link below as well that's going to have a write-up that has more information about this topic and I think you'll find it super helpful thanks for watching we'll see you next time